Hello YouTube! Welcome back to my channel. I am at JFK Airport and I am ready for my birthday vacation. Virgo season is here and I'm so excited to take you along this journey with me to Asia. I'm gonna have a 17 hour flight. So I'm trying to stay up because I want to sleep through the whole ride. So let's go. Alright you guys, so I finally made it on the plane. I am so happy. I really hope I feel better. Welcome um, aboard I'm American really, Airlines. This is a 17 hour flight. Not tired, but cranky. And that's what makes it And again, this, Small white I need to find a movie because this, this is just ghetto. This is just ghetto. Now, I'm on the plane. I'm in first class. And in first class, because this flight is over 13 hours, you'll get slippers and you'll get pajamas. So I'm about to change it to my PJ, but I just want to give you like the authenticness of what it's like to travel because it's not always your happy and you and I'm not going to fly on YouTube like everything is perfect because right now everything is going to crap. So I just need to think positive. I'm trying. All right, so I'm finally into my PJs. This is what I'm provided. Slippers. Shout out to American Airlines. So this is what first class look like. Same setup as business, only differences, and first you'll receive pajamas. I'm provided a pillow, blanket, and comforter. As for my meals, for starters, I had some nuts and olives, my two favorite, and since my stomach was acting up, I ordered ginger ale, thinking that would help with my bloating. I tried to stay on the healthier side, eating a salad, and I didn't order anything else, especially since they were out of lamb, but here is the menu for this flight. During mid-flight, I just ate a salad and grilled cheese, as you can see here, and called it a day and tried my best to sleep through the flight. Alright you guys, I am about to land one more hour until landing. This was the longest flight ever. I feel so much better. I don't know what it was, but when I went to that bathroom, I'm not cranky, I'm not crampy, I'm not bloated, so I'm ready. Um, I don't know if I'm ready for anything. So now since I'm about to land, I'm about to change out of my PJs. Prior to landing, you are required to fill out this custom sheet. You must take it with you off the plane and show this along with your visa when at custom. If I'm not mistaken, after you receive your stamp, you must keep this form with you when you leave India. And I usually keep this inside my passport. I just landed at the airport. I am at baggage claim right now. So it was a 17 hour flight. It is 10 o'clock now and I gotta leave my hotel at three in the morning. So I only got about like four hours in my hotel. So I'm gonna get my luggage and head out. And I'm sweating bullets. There is no AC in this, in this airport. Being that I did not know what to expect upon landing, I requested my hotel to pick me up from the airport and as you can see they had a sign waiting for me and I felt so special. Now that I can say I've been to India, I highly suggest Ubering to where you need to go as it's three times cheaper than having your hotel come get you. You can check out my blog for more details about that. So now I'm in the van that will be taking me to my hotel and it was luxurious because there was Wi-Fi embedded in the van so I don't have as much clips because I was too busy on my phone but here is the hotel that I'm staying at the Lottie. They do not play about security here. As you can see, there's metal detectors, the bags have to be checked. In the van that drove me here, I had to get checked. So this is my personal assistant who was with me during my entire stay. The hotel don't allow me to record, so I'm just gonna show you the suite that I stayed in. Welcome to my suite. As a platinum girly, I am able to snag all the perks. Room upgrade, check. Free breakfast, you bet. Guaranteed late checkout, absolutely. And let's not forget about the suite experience credit. In my case, a compliment 50 minute Swedish massage because why not pamper myself right I mean it is my birthday so I went all out booking the Lottie premiere room complete with the private plunge pool and I sent an email to the hotel about my birthday plans and boom a surprise cake and candles waiting for me which you'll see later on in this video Oh, and let's talk about the fancy toilet, a bidet and heated seats, because who wouldn't want a warm welcome from their toilet? <laughs> Cheers to the sweet life and birthday shenanigans at the Lottie. And as you can see here, this is the bathroom. I love when I have the option of a shower or a tub at the same time. But now let me show you what everybody wants in the room, a pool.
All right, you guys, I am in the pool, in my own room. There we go. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, there's my bathtub right there. So I can enjoy. And then I have a lounge right there. And then I have some balloons. And the hotel gave me some candles. So yeah. Don't forget to follow my IG. See all the content I made in here. But yeah, the Lottie Hotel, man. The Lottie. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Did I buy the right thing? Yes, yes. Okay. So you're not going to wear any petticoat? A coat? Petticoat. So what we, we will wear this petticoat. Oh, this, this doesn't, oh, I don't have. I don't want. want. It is currently 1 a.m. and like I mentioned earlier, I hired a private driver to pick me up from my hotel at 2 a.m. to take me to the Taj Mahal. Thankfully, I have my personal assistant to help me put on my sari. Since I arrived to India late at night, I ordered my sari on Amazon and brought it here with me and I had no idea it would take hours to put it on. I'm so thankful for her help. My sari was finally put on. There's no way of me going to the bathroom until it was time for me to take it off. My driver came and now I am on my way to the Taj Mahal and let me tell you, I am tired so i am on my way to the taj mahal i hired a private driver and a tour guide is going to meet me there so no one else is with me it's a solo trip um i am a bit nervous how i'm gonna take my pictures i'm going to ask the tour guide to like um help me take my pictures and like direct him on how to do it because this solo travel thing is not easy when you want good content so yeah so we'll see how it goes right now it's a three and a half hour drive and i'm like one hour away it says i'm gonna get there before 6 a.m and the taj mahal opens at 6 a.m so my goal is to like get there before it gets too crowded and i can get some good perfect content so let's see how it goes If I'm being honest with you, I'm not going to have many clips at the Taj Mahal because it was dangerous walking there, especially with my camera out and my tour guide suggested I put the camera away. And being that I'm solo traveling, I was not taking any risks. So this is all the clips I was able to get. Court means, if you see carefully all around yourself, you will find the four gardens in each corner. It's 6 a.m. and the Taj Mahal is packed. So at this point, it doesn't matter what time you come. It's always going to be busy. I strongly suggest having a tour guide because he'll be able to point certain places for you to go to get pictures where there's not too many people in the back. I made it to the Taj Mahal. It is right here. My camera cannot get the whole thing. Oh, perfect. That is a perfect angle. Hey, guys. Do you see the Taj Mahal from a different angle? But it all looks the same. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. There we go. So let me move forward a little bit so you can see the details. Huge shout out to my tour guide. He came through with my pictures and little content clips right in front of the Taj Mahal. I posted all his information on my blog, so make sure to check it out. My tour guide then took me to grab a cup of tea and then we went to a place where they actually help not build the Taj Mahal but keep it in place. We call it marble and Okay, marble and network. Oh, been done. This gentleman will show you, but this is the same work which has you have seen over there. Okay. And it is done by the same family workers so far. And 400, 400 years ago, they have done, their families have done this work over there. Okay. They are the descendants of those families who built in, who worked in the Taj, and still they are doing the same work with the same technique and tools. How they are doing it? The government of India trying to technically support them. So this gentleman will tell you the all process because I'm an expert of history. Mm -hmm. He's an expert of this work. Perfect. And he'll show you the rest of the work, how it's going on, and what Sunni has to make. Okay. This is the work has been done on the wall of Taj Mahal, which give you feel like as if they are painting, but there is no paint. There has been used 
semi precious stones, different color, tilted in white marble. So now they, this beautiful work done by the same Dalai descendant of the people who were in the Taj Mahal. So this art passed on to generation to generation. But still, we are using the same tool, same technique that was used in those days when Taj was built. So this is the work has been done with five different steps. Here you can see the each and every step, first, second, third, fourth and fifth. I am going to tell you about an each and every step in detail. So first, we in this art, we collect the semi precious stone. All the semi precious stone we get in the raw form like this. These rocks, we have to cut in a slices, so we can apply on this emery wheel. This emery wheel made of dust of ruby and the blue sapphire, so it can cut, it can shape any stone other than diamond. Because diamond is the very hard structure. To cut the diamond, it is diamond wheel. Which is called a side table. This is the piece can be used like a side table, side mm -hmm. lamp, cutting board, cheese board, hot plate, multi-purpose. Because marble is fully covered with the crystals. Wow. You see the crystals? Oh wow. I mean on the marble. No, no, yeah, I see that. I just want to see the light. <laughs> so you can see. Even the thickness, nothing about the thickness because if it is double thickness, the marble is still translucent. You can see. Wow. Now Taj Mahal. Only you have to take a powerful light. In the front of you, you can see they are the similar sizes. You cannot the same size because they are marble cutting also done by hand. Mm -hmm. And the handmade things never be the same, never be a perfect. So they are all are same size, but every piece has a different work. It means uh, take different, different time. So time and the price is never depend on the size of the marble, it depends on intricacy of work. Mm -hmm. So I finally left the Taj Mahal and I'm just going to explore New Delhi. But I only pull out my camera when I'm in the car with my driver. Because as you can see here, this is not, in my opinion, safe for a female solo traveler. And the traffic here is insane. They said if you could drive in New York, you can drive anywhere. But whoever said that, never been to India. Because in India, I don't even know what the rules are in driving. Because everyone's just driving everywhere. So the last few clips, I just want to show you the traffic and how people are when driving in New Delhi. Welcome to India! So there must be no rules on driving and being on the phone at the same time because this guy is doing it with ease and with one hand on a motorcycle going in between cars. Here I'm transferring from a car to a tuk-tuk now for a better experience on exploring New Delhi. And as you can see here, this man is just running in the middle of the street, just running in between cars, no sidewalk nearby. So I got in a few stairs here and there while in New Delhi, but nothing crazy like how you would get in China and everything. I guess they was just more shocked like a black American was there, but they wasn't like, ooh, I need want a picture with you, yada yada yada. I think that's more in the south of India. This summarized my 12-hour experience in New Delhi to conclude this video. Thank you everyone for watching.